Hi everyone and welcome to Vintage Digital Watches. To Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, before I forget, wrist wash check and I'm wearing the Secura Solar Watch. Um, I only wear this around the house because it's so goddamn rare. Uh, I don't want anything happening to it. And it is related to the subject that we are reviewing today and that is the Seiko A156. This is Seiko's first solar watch and we are going to give it a full rundown. We'll be looking at design, uh, we'll be also opening it up, we'll be talking about some likes and dislikes, some things that you need to watch out when buying one, so uh, sort of like a complete review. So if you want to get one, you are well informed. So let's kick it off with design. Being released in the late 70s, it still retains much of that early digital shape with a chunky appearance and rounded corners. Lugs are integrated in the case, which contributes to the larger look. The width at the lugs is 20 millimeters. The back is a screw on, which is nice and adds to the quality of the construction. And the entire case is made of stainless steel. As you would expect, it was produced in several versions. Geometry wise, there were three versions. The regular one, which you will see in this video, uh, and a Sports 100 version. And there was also a Silver Wave version, uh, which has a plastic bezel and that without a doubt is the more rare one. There were also variations on colors, gold and silver, and a variety of the inlay around the LCD. And typical of Seiko, they started changing the top grille, which uh, going further became sort of a trademark. You'll see these grills on other uh, digital watches and many variations of them. The LCD digits are easily readable as they are nice and thick. And at any time on the screen, you can see the hours, minutes, seconds, alarm indicator and day of the week indicator. So design wise, a very straightforward watch. Now let's get back to the bench and see what's inside. So the watch has basic functions. Uh, it tells time, it has a chronograph and it has an alarm. And uh, here we have the watch in timekeeping mode. Then we have the stopwatch, which is controlled by these buttons. Uh, and then we have the, here we go, alarm setting. And here in the last mode, I cycled a, a little bit too quickly through that, is how you set the time. And with the right button, you cycle through the item you want to set. So a few things that I don't like about this watch uh, is the fact that uh, the buttons are very flush to the case and you have to be more firm when you press them and also the travel is not that big so having clean buttons is important on this model uh, also if you buy one with a scratched crystal it's going to be a nightmare to polish because this one has the crystal sitting flush with the case of the watch. Also, dirt can accumulate uh, in the upper part here where we have a small porthole that goes to the speaker. That is common to other Seiko watches uh, and cleaning that is especially hard because you have to take down this trim uh, to get to that. And many people attempt with a screwdriver uh, or with tweezers uh, from the side and try to pry this out, but that's not how it's done and I'll show you in a minute how we can easily do that So this is the back cover removed and we can see here the module Bear in mind that you do have to have this retainer ring and this the purpose of this ring you can see uh, It has an irregular shape is so that when you screw on the back It presses against the module and keeps it aligned with the buttons if your watch is missing this, if you are going to uh, drop the watch or give it a stronger shock, uh, your module may uh, move in the watch because it doesn't have this and your buttons will not be aligned and you will be pressing like a madman on the buttons and they will just not respond. So uh, this is something that you do want to have. The module is taken out just by easily lifting it.
make sure you have the buttons out and there we go now the speaker uh, will always remain in place these are the contacts to the speaker and I'll show you right now how you will remove the front trim first of all you have to remove the speaker and you can just lift it up from the side and I'll do a close-up inside there so you can see what I'm talking about okay now you can see that uh, the front grill is actually attached to a plastic plate and that plastic plate has these two uh, plastic clips that uh, clip on the sides of the case and all you have to do is push this one towards that and this one towards the other uh, way and that's how you do it and there we go that is the front trim unlatched and now it can be easily lifted out this is a spare module I have around and now this trim can be pulled out from the side and taken out uh, bear in mind that it can only be done by through one side and then you can clean up that mess and the porthole so we all know that this watch is a solar so what battery does it fit in there well i don't have the correct part so i'm using one of these batteries it's an sr1130 and i do believe that has a three letter equivalent it can easily be found with a web search but yeah this is an uh, sr or lr1130 battery size you need for the watch some people are careful uh, if you do use a regular battery um, there is a practice to cover these two pads uh, which are the plus and minus coming from the solar panel just so you don't have a regular battery being charged uh, from in my case I never uh, put anything on that um, I've never seen a situation where a battery would blow up or bloat because it's being charged um, it's in my mind it's basically you are just putting two power cells in parallel but if you want to be 100 percent safe uh, you can just put a bit of tape over that uh, and just use a regular battery but i don't do that it's your choice the battery that i've used in other watches like the MT920 from Panasonic which is a modern-day uh, power cell uh, is not this size so it will not fit into the battery recess correctly unless you do something to it and some people put conductive material around smaller batteries just to increase their size so you get some copper tubing uh, in which the battery fits inside and you cut uh, one that's tall enough uh, to cover the entire battery and then you just put that over the battery uh, increase essentially increasing its size and then maybe you can use it in a place where the battery recess is larger than the battery you have it does have a micro light uh, on the top left corner which is activated by the top left corner button and to activate and deactivate the alarm you just hold the two buttons on the right activating and deactivating so I do have this page from a magazine from 1979 that talks about the watch and it says that the gold model is $295 and the silver one is $250 and it also talks about the battery life and it says that it will last up to 10 years without a change and uh, up to five years if you are a user of the night light all right we've come to the point where we give this watch some marks so collectability seven out of ten being the first solar digital from seiko must account for something and also having strong variations 
it is hard to avoid if you are a collector. A must-have in a Seiko LCD collection and a nice to have for someone who collects a bit of everything. Prices are still in acceptable margins and it will be over $120 only if you are shooting for a very nice one. Usually prices are within $70 to $80 for a good used one. So 7 out of 10 for price. Availability will give it an 8 out of 10 because at any given time 2 or 3 are available on eBay and other similar places which makes sense to wait for the chance to get the one uh, which you like and is acceptable to you condition-wise. So don't rush if you want one, but do shop around. So what is my take on the Seiko A156? Well, it's not the prettiest solar panel watch, but it is the first. Seiko chose to tuck away the solar panel right in the top right corner uh, on subsequent models, it chose to put more emphasis on the solar panel, which was nice. And uh, the Sports 100 and Silverwave versions, uh, in my opinion, they are better looking. But this one is like, it, it has that image of the pure digital watch, no nonsense, uh, which is why I like it. And also because it's the first so it will always have a place in my collection. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you check out these awesome watch resources. They are digital watch related, but not only that. And do hit the subscribe button because I try to release digital watch related videos as often as possible. So I'll see you on the next video. Bye.